The idea that I could find one spot in, in the brain which was the common target of all antipsychotics came as a big shock to everyone. Uh, I was told that antipsychotics acted in many, many parts of the brain, many, many proteins, many receptors, and here I found one region which was common to all the different antipsychotics. There are five types of dopamine receptors in the brain, but the one that is the target for antipsychotic medication is the type 2 receptor. And the type 2 receptors are very rich in the caudate putamen, in the basal ganglia of the brain, the caudate nucleus and the putamen. And that has primarily motor control of the body, arms and legs. And then there are psychologically located dopamine type 2 receptors found in the cingulate gyrus and the cerebral cortex, nucleus accumbens, all these mysterious parts of the brain. Uh, presumably associated with thinking and feeling. Imagine if we could shrink down to the size of a molecule of dopamine or one of these first-line antipsychotic agents. What would we see down there at the molecular level? As the dopamine is released by the dopamine nerve cells at five times per second in great pulses, the dopamine molecule then arrives at the receptor area, just 100 angstroms away, and it goes on and off the receptor very, very quickly, perhaps as many as a million times a second. And in the presence of an antipsychotic, like haloperidol, the access to the receptor by dopamine is blocked. So there is a competition between haloperidol and dopamine. And in this case, haloperidol being tightly bound wins the competition and dopamine transmission is partly blocked. Olanzapine also blocks the dopamine receptor, but the dopamine molecules are still able to outcompete some of the olanzapine so that there is some modest transmission. Haloperidol is a tightly bound drug. It comes off slowly, but its dose at 10 milligrams per patient per day stays on for a day or two or three or more. Uh, and that's good news to control the psychotic symptomatology. But over the years, if that dosing continues daily and weekly and monthly, then that accumulates and causes tardive dyskinesia. The extrapyramidal symptoms kick in when there's more than 80% blockade by haloperidol, so that it's relatively easy with haloperidol as the dosing goes up to walk into the Parkinsonian range with Parkinsonism, elevated prolactinemia, galactorrhea, amenorrhea, and of course, long-term tardive dyskinesia. Olanzapine is effective uh, at um, 10, 20 milligrams per patient per day. It can produce Parkinsonism above 20 or 30 milligrams. There is a risk of tardive dyskinesia, which has been reported, and there is weight gain 